not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Just when all hopes seem lost, message of a new stunt to an unknown old great warrior. Frank and Widowmaker here, boys, coming to you live all the way from the farm, and today have we got a video for you. That's right, today we're going to do a fun one together, and I'm going to teach you something that I've been wanting to teach you for a long time. Originally, I was going to make this video and post it on a Patreon account down the road, you know, when I was built up daily video credibility, and you can trust me to become a member or whatever, a supporter. Anyhow, we're not going to do that. Today I'm going to entertain you uh, just the way this YouTube channel should. Yesterday it was kind of not such a great video. I appreciate you watching it and, uh, you know, interacting with thumbs up and comments and all that. And today I'm going to make it worth your while, which means we're going to learn how to do body work today for beginners. Yep, there's absolutely no doubt about it. That's a dent. So let's learn how to fix a dent. Fix a dent and forget it. So we're in the silo now. You can see I have the tailgate on my workbench and she's got a great big dirty dent. Two of them actually. Uh, yeah, there were some other dents here. But, well, there's a few. But there was nothing major. And I want to teach you guys the redneck way to fix dents in a foolproof way that, uh, you know, gives you confidence to fix something big and bad like this. Am I a bodywork expert? No. Do I have any formal training? No. Do I have any fancy tools? No. But I've done a lot of trial and error and I've come up with a foolproof redneck way to show you how to shape body filler instead of sanding it. And I will show you the difference because there is a huge difference between simple sanding and sculpting your body filler. The first thing I do when repairing a dent is I lay a true straight edge across it and assess the situation so that I can determine where is still good, where the valley is, and where is still good. Because you're going to need to take all the paint out of that valley, all the primer, and we don't want to go too far because uh, car dealerships or car manufacturers use excellent primer, so we don't want to take off more than we have to, just what we need to repair the dent. Now if I move this forward, we can see the valley. The valley is underneath. That's going to be a lot of body filler, so we're going to pop that out a bit. And we can also assess the situation and see that our dent has run into our badging. So we're going to have to take this badge off so that we can actually uh, use the sandpaper to shape the dent properly without this being in the way. So that's the first thing we're going to do. You can see right here I've made a quick and dirty debadging tool. It's basically a soldering iron, a piece of MIG welding wire, and a pair of pliers to hold it from the other end. These are not pliers, these are fence repair tools. But same thing, only different. So now I'm going to heat up the wire. I'm going to cut off the excess. And then, it's going to take a few minutes to get hot. And there you have it. We cut through the glue and we remove the badge. 3M does make a very good decal eraser that takes this glue off like magic without damaging paint or glass. We're doing body work. There's going to be scratches from sandpaper here so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the paint's getting damaged anyway so what we're going to do is use a wire brush and get rid of that glue. She's all warmed up and moved around. Now we can take a razor blade. Alright, I've now removed as much as I can. That way, I hate using sandpaper on glue because it's just going to clog up the sandpaper. And sandpaper is not cheap anymore. I do have some lacquer thinner. I don't have any decent shop rags, but I have toilet paper. We'll give that a go. All right, the lacquer thinner has got rid of most of what was left. I told you I didn't have any fancy tools, so don't laugh at my toilet paper. Anyhow, there we go. The badge is dealt with. Now, obviously, if this tailgate was in better shape and this wasn't just a down and dirty demonstration, I would have used the decal eraser and not uh, gouged the paint. If it mattered, in this position, uh, it's in the way of our dent repair, so it doesn't matter. 
Okay, when you're doing body work, you want minimal body filler. From now on, I'm going to call it Bondo, but Bondo is body filler. And you want to pop out as much of the dent as you can back out the way it went in. And that way, you don't need as much body filler. I'm going to charge the camera right now because the damn thing is dead. Then we're going to flip this tailgate over, drill a hole on the opposite side of where the center of our dent is, and we're going to pop her back out this way. It looks like I'm going to have to buy more camera batteries now because uh, this camera has one and that's just not enough. It's holding me back. There's always something to spend money on. Great! We are back. The camera is charged. I didn't really do anything without you. I took the handle out of there so the tailgate will lay flat when it's upside down. And I took the badge off over here because I was bored while waiting for the battery to charge. Now, when we're going to do this tailgate dent repair, we're going to assume that it's like just a dent. You know, the rest of the tailgate's not supposed to be this bad. We're going to pretend that all this paint's good, all this paint's good, and that it's just a mint condition tailgate with a, a big ass dent right here. So our approach to fixing this dent is going to rely on you pretending that the rest of this is okay. So keep that in mind. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this out as much as we can. Normally, if you have a dent puller, you can put a hole in it, screw the dent puller in and use the slide hammer to take it out. Uh, some people have success putting a plunger on certain dents and popping them out a bit. You could put a port of power in here and you could pop it out with the port of power jaws. There's lots of ways to do it. But uh, I'm going to assume you don't have a dent puller and we're going to do this with no fancy tools. Alright, so we can see that the lowest part of our valley, the lowest part of our dent, is at 17 and a half inches from the tailgate edge and it's 9 inches from the top so now we can flip this over and make a mark this is the back side of the tailgate you can see how bad a tailgate gets which is exactly why we don't mind drilling a hole from this side you won't always be able to access the back side of a dent but in this case this is the best way to do it with uh, basic tools. So I have my mark right there. I'm now going to drill a hole. I measured. I'm on the back side. My hole is drilled. Right now we can see that our dent is one inch deep at its lowest point. We do not want an inch thick slab of Bondo. So we are going to push as much of that back out as we can. I told you that we were going to learn body work with minimal basic tools. So I'm not going to use any of my fancy punches. I'm just going to use a bolt with a dull end. You don't want to use a screwdriver, you want you know, quite a bit of surface area at the end of your punch which actually makes this a little bit better than a punch because punches are usually pointy. Alright, we now have a half inch I'm going to try and pop it out some more. All right, we're now down to a quarter of an inch. You can now see that we've pushed out a whole bunch of this area. It's pretty much where it needs to be now and you could tell because there's no gap underneath the straight edge. And the same thing on this side. Our uh, body filler area is much narrower now, but we're able to pull out more of this dent. We just need another hole because you can see there's these two dents that I did and they're kind of combined with this one. And in order to get this one pushed out more, we're going to need to work this one out because it's kinked right there. You can see and kinks are the hardest part of body work. They'll really mess you up. So. Uh, we want to push this area out now and hopefully relieve that kink and relieve some of the tension that's on this dent. And we do that the exact same way. I'm going to measure from the edge over and from the edge down, put a hole on the opposite side and start pounding this dent out which will make it easier to get more of this dent out.
it's hard to see the dent now because she's pretty much popped out and now we can work on popping this one out a little bit more and then start prepping for our body filler all right now you can really see what started off as a dent about a foot wide is now only about I don't know two inches wide and you can tell yet again use your straight edge for a reference if you can't see any gap underneath then you don't need body filler and obviously this tailgate has curvature in it we will get to that but right now we're just worried about this part right here so now we can start marking off our high spots our low spots and knock it down with the grinder so that we can start body filler so you can see if you take this straight edge and you put it down here we're gonna have a gap down here and no gap there because it kind of gets flat and then up there you can see a gap that's not dense that's just because there's curvature in the way the tailgate was designed and that straight edge level doesn't offer any curves whereas this one it does offer curves now it's kind of hard for me to hold both ends and show you how we use it so I'm gonna put some weight on this end and right now you can see a gap underneath there right a gap but this one's flexible so we can bend it to match the contour of the tailgate and we can reference to see if there's any gaps underneath it which there's not and that's a good thing because this is a formed edge that was embossed and these are pretty much impossible to pop dents out of we have a dent that's really close right there but our formed edge is perfectly fine all right, so what that tells us is we don't need to worry about anything under here. We're just, remember, this is supposed to be a mint condition tailgate with a dent. Pretend the paint here is good. We're working from this line up. All right, so when I'm doing body work, uh, I'm not a master at it. I like to use what I call a story coat because uh, body work is something that takes years and years and years of uh, it's like an art, you know, you have to perfect it. You're not just going to read a book and do it. It takes lots of practice. Uh, I'm going to show you how to cheat. I'm going to show you how to read what's going on if you can't see it. Or, you know, actually when you're doing body work, you can feel it with your fingers better than you can see it with your eyes. You know, rub your hand along it and you will feel what's going on, which tells a story. But it's a lot easier to use a story coat and you'll you'll understand in a second I'm gonna do some sanding here and basically the whole principle behind it is when you have your sandpaper down on your material if there's a dip a valley or a low spot your sandpaper is not going to be able to reach the bottom of that so it's going to show us exactly where they are and exactly what's already smooth and doesn't need to be worked on here we go things should make a whole lot more sense right now this is a story coat the first of several and the reason it's called the story coat is because you can see our dent <laughs> it's like magic this is our dent where we have untouched black shiny paint the sandpaper did not touch that means that's a low spot that's a low spot uh, anywhere that you can see nice even sanding means that there's no dents there there's no high spots there's no low spots she's gonna look smooth low spot good spot high spot the reason you tell high spots is because with light sanding they come to bare metal first which means that this needs to be pushed in otherwise we need to take a whole lot of bondo and bump it out in order to feather the edge over that so you know sometimes when you're doing dent repair you're gonna have to take high spots like that and you're gonna actually have to dent them in now I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's the way I do it and I have really good results. Don't be afraid to dent a dent in order to make it so less body filler is required. Now what I'm going to do is I can see very clearly where we need to take it down to bare metal because when you're using body filler you always want the area to be bare metal. Do not ever put Bondo or body filler over paint, over clear coat or any of that stuff. Bare metal and bare metal only. I'm not going to use a grinder. This is called a flap disc. It goes on a grinder and it's basically like 40 grit sandpaper that's on a grinder wheel. These are awesome for body work.
There we have it. I've used the flap disc and I've removed all the paint and primer from our low spots. I've also brought the edge of the dent out, the bare metal area, because when we're filling this with body filler, the plan is to feather the edge of it and bring it as close to the original primer as we can, because the original primer is always better. A quick wipe of our story coat shows me that I didn't quite go enough right there. So I'm going to hit that again because that's obviously a low spot. We can tell by the black. That's fixed now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sander and I'm going to sand this a little more thoroughly. That's pretty good. Now something I want to show you that's very, very important when doing body work is most people are lazy. Body work is not for the lazy. Sometimes you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. You can see right there, there's no dent, it's just a chip with very minor rust in it. If you paint over that, that rust is going to expand and it's going to make your bodywork bubble. So, what you want to do is you want to make damn sure there's absolutely no rust there at all. You know, prep is a big, big part of the job. Most people just slam body filler on, sand it a bit and call her done. It's an art. This is not just filling and sanding. We are sculpting. Now, once you get to this point, if you put a hole here with a dent puller and a screw, now's the time to weld it because you never want to heat up the metal after body filler is applied to it because that makes it not stick so great. You don't want to do that. Once you get to this point, if you have any welding to do on your dent, now's the time to do it. You never want to weld after you have body filler applied because the metal heats up and it makes the bondo separate. And oh, am I drunk or are you drunk? Because I sure look blurry. Anyhow, there I go. I'm back! Anyhow, uh, I keep saying bondo. Bondo is just a brand name for body filler. Believe me, I don't use bondo. I will show you what I do use and I'll tell you why. Alright, so when I say Bondo, what I'm actually talking about is any body filler. I don't use Bondo, I use Evercoat. Now you might be looking at this stuff and thinking to yourself, that's a professional product. Bondo works, this stuff probably costs twice as much for no reason, and you would be wrong. I go to a body shop supply store, I buy this for $20 a gallon, whereas if I walk into a big box store right now, a gallon of Bondo is almost 50 the other bonus is Bondo is extremely hard to sand. When you're doing body work, you want lightweight body filler. This stuff sands in half the time, is twice as good, and costs half as much. So the next tip I'm going to give you for success in body work is do not buy cheap sandpaper. There are different grades of sandpaper. Some's made for wood, some's made for metal, and if you're paying more for sandpaper, it's going to last longer and make your job a lot easier. This here is junk. You can buy like 50 sheets of this for 20 bucks at Canadian Tire and it is a paper backed sandpaper. When you try using this on metal, it lasts like a minute and you can see all the grains falling off. This stuff is a little bit more expensive, but it's got a cloth backing and literally one sheet of this will do the whole tailgate, whereas I would need like 10 sheets of this. So if you don't like sanding, then spend a little bit more and get quality sandpaper. And when your sandpaper starts getting dull, throw it away! Don't waste your elbow grease trying to sand with dull sandpaper. It's just stupid and it will make you discouraged and want to give up and stop sanding. And that's usually the number one problem that people have with bodywork that shows is they hate sanding, they go cheap on the sandpaper and they give up. I'm going to show you the next biggest mistake they make. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to show you is that people don't use the right size tools when they're doing body work and that is why they usually get frustrated. So right here, we have a dent that's what, four inches wide and we have a sanding block. This is actually a big one for drywall, but usually the ones they sell for body filler are palm sized and they are way too small for fixing big dents. And the reason that that is, is because if we have a four inch wide dent, and we only have a three inch wide sanding block and we fill this dent with body filler the body filler sands easy so as we're sanding we're basically cutting down into the body filler and creating another another valley which doesn't work you can't do that your block always needs to be wider than your dent 
you can see right there, you know, there's nice smooth flat metal here, there's nice smooth flat metal there. If you put 40 grit sandpaper on here, you will be a month before you ever sand and create a divot in the metal. Body filler sands easy, metal does not. You always, always, always want to have the edges of your sanding block on metal. Never have the edge on the body filler or you're going to screw it up. The other thing about this is, like I was saying, there's curvature in the tailgate. There is no curvature in this, which is why you would not use this for this dent. I'm going to try and make a demonstration uh, that I'll add to the video, like a picture, to show you how the flat sanding block affects the finish of a curved tailgate and why it screws everyone up even if they sand it perfectly smooth it will still show and that my friends is why this here flexible stick is the secret weapon to bodywork success because when you put self adhesive sandpaper on here you can use any sandpaper you can put caulking cut strips stick it on and let it dry use self adhesive sometimes I even take a thin layer of Bondo when I'm in a rush I put a skim coat of Bondo on there and then slap some sandpaper strips on, give it five minutes to dry, and bang! You've got a flexible, foolproof sanding block that absolutely will not let you screw it up. With this thing being flexible, if you bend it and hold it to the contour, you're going to shape and sculpt your body filler into matching the curvature of the tailgate or whatever you're working on exactly. It's literally foolproof. Whereas these, these are not. Not at all. The next biggest mistake that people make when starting out in bodywork is finger sanding. You never want to finger sand. Ever. Never. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. There's one time you can finger sand and it's like this. Where it's never going to show again and you want to get all of the paint out of the deepest part of the dent where you can't get a, a power tool. So I'm going to do that right now, get ready for body filler and I'll get right back with you. I'm not sure if I explained finger sanding properly so I'm going to go for it again. This is a sanding block, this is a flat surface. You want flat surface on flat surface. When you use your fingers, you're applying uneven pressure on the back of the sandpaper and you could be putting ripples in your bodywork or your paint. Don't do it, you know, sanding block. Always, always, always. All right, another tip for bodywork is that the bigger your repair area compared to your dent and you feather the edges out wide, the harder it's gonna be to see. Also, if you have multiple dents, sometimes it's a good idea to take them and just work them all into one repair, which is what I'm gonna do here. You know, there's just, there's a ton of dents. I might as well just get rid of all this paint and make one repair area. Uh, basically the body filler, wherever it's not required, will level down to metal again and uh, instead of working with each dent independently, we got a super wide sanding stick, we might as well just do them all. There you go, now you can see that I've lost my story coat because I've taken it out so far to bring all the dents into one repair. Now, we don't want to put Bondo over the whole thing. There's no point in putting Bondo on where you're just going to have to sand it off. So we now have bare metal where Bondo can go anywhere and we need to figure out where our low spots are again without the story coat. Here's how we do that. We go back to our straight edge for reference. We can see we do not need body filler here. We just need to feather it out. So there's no point in bringing it all the way here. You know, not thick anyway. We need it thick here and extremely thin here and extremely thin here. This is our reference. So we're going to take this pencil and we're going to mark where the low spots are if you can't see them. Right there. You can see, bang, our dent ends right there. There's no gap underneath. Move it back a bit, bam, we have gap right there. So we need body filler here, we do not need it here. So I'm going to mark out all of my low spots with the pencil and then show you what it looks like. I've now marked out with a pencil all of my super deep low spots. These are going to be the first place where we put our body filler. Uh, you don't need to worry about the pencil, it can stay on there, it won't harm anything. And basically we want to start building this up with uh, as little sanding as possible. So we're going to start here 
and then we're going to check it with the story coat and add more until eventually we can just put a skim coat of body filler over the entire area and shape it until it feathers out here. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is these two hickers here. Okay, open them. There we go. All right. So these are body filler spreaders. And they do not last forever. These are disposable. When you buy them new, they have a nice straight edge on them. Nice and smooth. No gouging, no nicks, no nothing. They're also nice and smooth on each of these edges, which means that they're easy to clean. When they start getting hard to clean, when they start getting deformed on the edge, or when they start being like gouged and stuff there, throw them away. You know, these don't last forever. And the shittier these are, the more sanding you're going to do, and the more body filler you're going to use. These are like five bucks. Pretty much every time you do a body job, new spreaders. Next, when you're mixing your body filler, don't go mixing it on some piece of junk that's full of dirt and all that. Get something decent. You can buy Bodno mixing boards, which I don't really like. I like disposable. I know it sounds terrible because these are going to end up in the dump or something. But what can you do? I'm a perfectionist and I like a job well done. And when I mix body filler on these, they're clean, they're cheap, and they're easy to get rid of. And uh, basically, yeah, you want to mix Bondo in small amounts because when you mix a lot of it, it costs money and you're going to feel obligated to spread it on your work surface, whether it's beginning to harden or not. And that is another good way where you end up with way too much to sand. And sanding is what makes people give up. You want to work slow, steady. We're building a sculpture here, so we need to add a little bit at a time. And, you know, be careful with it. And just keep in mind, everything you put on, if it's too much, you're going to be the one taking it off. And it's much easier to mix Bondo on a plate and add it as needed than it is to put a whole gob of it on there and sand off what's not needed. Does size matter? Size absolutely matters. You want to take the one that's going to be best suited for your repair. Now we can see right here if I use this uh, short small one, I'm within my dent. Which means that my first layer of body filler that goes on is not going to be too high. That's guaranteed because I'm within my dent. Whereas if I use this one, then I'm putting body filler right here where it's not needed and up there where it's not needed at least not yet you know you could do it this way which would work better because then you're following the contour right you see if I go this way the spreader rocks so we don't want to spread that way we want to spread this way where the spreader can't rock because it's on a straight straight surface Bam! you see look under there you see the gap coming there it is that's the only place we want body filler right now. Body filler sticks to metal. It does not stick to dust. If you have a compressor, blow it off. If you do not, a broom will do. You want to broom off all the dust as best as you can. You can see that the body filler is not exactly mixed. We do want to stir it. That is for sure because you don't want you know, too much resin stuff in one part, not in another. We want it nice and uniform, so we're going to stir it up. She's been stirred. Here's what our first coat looks like when you're doing body work and you're done with your spreader. Always take it and push the Bondo side down onto a piece of junk. Because then once it hardens and you lift your spreader, usually the body filler will stay on the piece of junk. Which makes cleaning your spreader a whole lot easier. Another thing is when you're spreading and you have high spots like this, you wait until it's semi-hard and then you grab something, pretty much anything will do, and you just give her one of these because that's less sanding. You know, all your high spots, take them down like that and that way you won't tear up your sandpaper. So before it gets completely hard, it's not tacky, it's starting to cool down from the chemical reaction. You take old sandpaper and you just give her a scuff. Just like that. That's all it takes to knock the shine off the body filler 
and save your good sandpaper from clogging up. There, you see what the glazing does to the sandpaper? That's why we use old stuff and we do not do our first sand with good sandpaper. Get rid of the shine, save your sandpaper. Alright, now we are at the important part. The flexible stick. And this thing's going to make all the difference in the world. If you're not good at body work, you will be after this. Gator Grit. This is my cloth backed sandpaper. It's Gator brand. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I'll tell you, Gator is the best damn sandpaper ever for body work. Alright, so the next tip I'm going to give you is to buy your sandpaper at Home Depot. They are the only ones I've found who sell Gator Grit sandpaper in contractor packs, which saves you a lot of money. They're not an auto body supply store. They're not even an automotive place, but when it comes to sandpaper, that's where you want to go. So I'm going to lay my sandpaper out. I'm going to put the straight edge on it like that. I'm going to take an X-Acto knife or a razor blade and I'm going to start cutting it into strips that are this wide. I have the strips cut for my secret weapon. This is the way to go. Bam! You see that? The body filler stays on the piece of junk because it's got a more porous surface than this does. Easiest way to clean your spreaders squish them down and leave the extra on the junk. So I've had this yardstick forever. I always use it for body work. It's been used many 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 times. Uh, if you have an old one like this you're going to want to take a razor blade and you're going to want to scrape all of the back of it until this is completely flat because if you glue sandpaper down to here and there's a bump underneath the sandpaper that bump is going to create a low spot in your body filler needs to be perfectly smooth. If you want to have perfectly smooth body work, everything you do needs to be working towards that. Alright, she's good to go. Now we just take some normal caulking. We want a very thin layer. Now I know how stupid this looks, but believe me when you try it, mm -hmm. body work will never intimidate you again. So we put on just a tiny thin layer of caulking, any caulking will do. This stuff is like two bucks a tube. And then, once you're done that, you want to grab anything, and you want to spread that out. Make sure there's no bumps on your bench. And then, Flip your sandpaper sand side down and put some pressure on it to squish out any excess caulking because we need just a micro thin layer there to hold the sandpaper on and that's it. And the less you have in there, the faster it will dry and the faster you can get back to work. Now, with the caulking that's coming out the edge, we do not want caulking contaminating our bodywork. So we're going to do this. and get rid of it. Alright, the camera battery is charged again. Damn it, I cannot stand when machines slow me down when I'm trying to work. Anyhow, at least I needed to let the caulking dry. This is our bodywork secret weapon. That's all there is to it. Now I'm going to put the tailgate back here and show you how to use it. The tailgate's back, so is the straight edge, and you can see that we have a gap here, and we have a gap there. Very, very small which means that our body filler is about one millimeter or approximately uh, what would it be I guess about an eighth of an inch higher than our metal surface which means we only need to sand down a millimeter or an eighth of an inch alright now would be a good time to do a better explanation of why I dislike sanding blocks obviously this one is for drywall mud it's not for body work at all it's like at least twice as big as they usually are and uh, I like this one for body work because it's bigger. You need big. When you want to do perfect body work, you always, always, always have to have your sanding block on metal and on metal at each end with body filler in the middle. Because if you're sanding down with 40 grit, it's going to wear away body filler and it is impossible to sand through this metal. Which means you can sand and sand and sand and once this metal doesn't go down, and prevents the edges of the sanding block from going down any further then you've got your body filler exactly level and flush with the metal alright 
I hope that makes sense. Anyhow, uh, we're not going to use this. This is, you know, it would work because it's long enough to go both ways and still touch metal. When you're sanding back and forth, short strokes do not come all the way like this because if you're putting pressure here, you're recreating the divot that you just filled. Always. Short strokes. Never leave the metal. And you want to have as much metal as you can. You know, if you go this way, that's about the width of a normal sanding block. The edge is on body filler. The edge is on body filler. Now even if I'm doing short strokes there, I'm not on the metal and I'm wearing down the part that's easy to wear down, which it's just working against yourself. Anyhow, we're not going to use this one because I'm really eager to show you this. Because the other problem with this is it's flat. It's flat. So how do you sand contour with something that's flat? You know, the problem is, say this goes this way, but you sand it like this, then you're going to have a contour that goes up, levels out, and then goes down. And the reason that we're using this is because this bends to contours. You know? Look. I can bend it to any contour from any vehicle, and as long as I keep metal on each side, it is impossible to screw this up. You see, if I hold my sanding block in a contour that matches the tailgate, then it's impossible to go too deep. Alright, so what I'm trying to explain to you here is from this angle you should be able to see there is a contour like this. When you're using a flat sanding block, you have to be really, really good at sculpting body filler with years of experience to maintain the contour without leveling it out too much and creating a flat spot that will show when you paint it. That's why I like this. You see, if it's flat, I'm all over the place. If it's bent to the contour, it's impossible to screw up. My first layer of body filler is applied and I've started sculpting it into the right shape. You can see right here and right here there are low spots. They're darker. Your body filler will also work like a story coat until you get it pretty smooth and then I will show you how to perfect it. But right now we definitely need more there and more there. I've now applied a minimal amount to my low spots as well as I've started some uh, dent repair that wasn't very deep. Uh, we'll grab them all while we're here. And uh, basically right now I just have to wait for this to harden and uh, I'm going to keep building it up and sanding it down until I get to the point where most people would quit. And then I'm going to show you how to perfect it. So it's been five or six minutes. The chemical reaction is starting to cool down. We don't really have any high spots that require a razor blade. So we're back to taking our old used sandpaper and you can see it gets clogged up. That's exactly why we're using this stuff to take the shine off the Bondo. And yes, I realize again that I'm hand sanding but I'm not sculpting. I'm just knocking down the shine. We're at the point now where a lot of people think it's good enough. Oh, it feels so smooth. Well, there's no such thing as good enough with bodywork. It's either perfectly smooth and matches the contour or it's not. And if it's not, it's going to show, especially with black paint. Anyhow, you can see after some sanding, I filled, you know, a little bit more here. Did some sanding and you can see a dark area right there. This dark area means a low spot. It means the sandpaper is not touching down there. Up here where it's white, it's obviously sanding. So, more body filler is required here. And we are almost done. I have another skim coat hardening right now and I noticed while I was sanding I knocked off some paint chips with rust underneath. It's minimal but it, you can't have any. If you have any rust there it's going to grow, expand, bubble out your paint and bodywork. Right now is the time to get rid of it so that's what I'm going to do. So this was a brand new sheet of sandpaper but I wanted to show you what happens when you don't take the shine off of the Bondo. You know, it plugs up the sandpaper like that. But if you take the shine off while she's cooling down with old sandpaper, then you don't have to screw up a brand new sheet like this. Looks pretty good, right? Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yes. 
you can put the straight edge on there, metal to metal, and see no gap underneath it now. That does not mean that we are done. If I were to paint this, you would absolutely see it. Actually, I could feel it. It's not done. Anyhow, we have a whole bunch of small dents in a big area. So what we're going to do now is we are going to turn all the small dents into one big dent. Because the bigger the repair, the harder it is to see. Now, normally when you want to know where you need body filler and all that stuff, you use a story coat. It makes your life very easy. Primer and body filler are not really meant to go together like that. So uh, what I do is I cheat. Now it's time to cheat. Rather than using paint or primer for the story coat, we are going to use a different color of hardener. You see I've been using blue. That one's blue, this one's red. So now that I have all of the, the low spots, the valleys filled pretty much, I'm going to bring all these dents together and in order to know where I'm at in my repair, I am switching to red hardener, which will make a whole lot more sense when you see me sanding this down in a minute. It's basically telling you that if you sand through the red and you start sanding through blue, you're going too deep. Alright, so you can see I've brought all of our dents together with one skim coat of red body filler. And yes, I've brought it out over the paint where it should not be. I did that intentionally because I'm going to be sanding this and it's going to have sandpaper on this. And I don't want to keep enlarging my bare metal area. So I'm trying to protect the primer with a thin layer of body filler. And that way, uh, you know, I won't keep enlarging this area. And I'm going to sand this down, which is working towards feathering the edge of the body filler with the primer that's underneath this paint. And we'll smooth it all out and blend it all together. Anyhow, I have to wait a few minutes for this to harden. And things are about to start happening here. Right now I'm going to scarify the surface, remove the shine. Yes, I'm going to use this. The reason that I'm doing that is because I know where the high spots are and I'm only doing the high spots. They're very easy to see because they're ridges in the body filler. I'm taking those off, but I'm not shaping yet. I'm just getting rid of the shine. Another thing is if you've ever sanded wood, you know that sanding against the grain removes a lot more material a lot faster. When you're doing body filler, you also want to sand against the grain if you want to remove material faster. Obviously body filler has no grain, so we create it. How do we create it? Like that. We now have scratches going this way. If we go across the scratches that way, then we're now going against the grain. Now you're probably wondering why I would tell you not to use the small sanding block and then use it. The reason that I did that is because at this point in the repair, I can guarantee I'm not going to go too low. If I either see bare metal or blue bondo, I know I've gone too far. And you can see through a thin layer, like right there. The color starts changing, so you know if I sand here anymore, I'm going too deep. I'm knocking down the shine and I'm knocking down the ridges. As soon as I do that, I quit with that sanding block and I move on to our sculpting tool. All right, so here's a good example of a piece of bodywork that has contours in every direction with no flat spots. It has a contour this way, and it has a contour this way, which means that the whole time I was sanding this great big area, I had to keep the secret bodywork weapon bent to the contour of the tailgate and sand this way and sand that way until I got it perfect. This is definitely not a beginner project. But uh, yeah, it shows you that sometimes having a tool that bends is very important. The other thing about this here job too is it used to have a windshield wiper, used to have a door lock and a handle, used to have a big license plate holder right there on that side. It had a great big gap here for the two doors on the bottom and it had a great big gap here for the doors on the top. So basically this whole lift gate has been uh, skim coated with Bondo and it all had to be sculpted with the secret weapon at the same time and that's how I got it so perfect without being a bodywork professional. We almost have this dent fixed 
sanding uh, revealed a few things, like it revealed another dent, a low spot right there, and another one right here. And a big thing that it revealed is right here. This is a high spot. I can feel it big time. It's kinked outwards from when the dent went in, it pushed this out. And there's two ways to fix this if you want to have a smooth surface. You can either continue building up Bondo until you're over top of that and smooth it out wide or you can grab a hammer and a chisel and you can push that in and then you only need a small amount of body filler right there, right? And always, always, always you want minimal body filler. You do not want itch, inch thick slabs. So right now I'm going to give that a hit and I know it sounds ridiculous to put a dent in something I'm trying to remove dents from but trust me that is the best way that I know to take care of this. There you go. I put the dent inwards instead of outwards. Alright, so I'm now going to mix up another skim coat batch of body filler. I used red last time, so now I'm going to alternate back to the blue because I know that this is level. I do not want to sand through blue and start sanding through red. Because if I do that, I'm creating valleys again. Don't want valleys. We want smooth and we're almost there there's my blue skim coat we're almost done uh, now at this point I'm going to switch to a lighter grit sandpaper probably like a hundred you know I'll rough it up I'll knock down the shine and then I will start uh, smoothing out any heavy deep scratches with uh, about a hundred grit sandpaper all right we're outside right now and while I have Bondo hardening on the tailgate inside, I want to show you a real world example of how this tool here can help you do foolproof bodywork. So as you know, I bought this red van. When I went to go see the red van, I could see all of the bodywork that was done to it. I am in no way knocking the guy that did the bodywork. I'm not even sure if it's the same person I bought the van from. Uh, anyhow, I know he's a subscriber and he's watching now. So uh, if you did the bodywork on this van, I am not knocking you at all, brother. You know, I don't expect you to be a professional. I'm not even a professional. But uh, I hope you are watching so that if you have to do more bodywork, I can show you how to perfect what you've done right here by using one of these foolproof sanding sticks. So, you probably can't tell from back there, but I can tell and I can feel it. There's a dip right here. Now there's red paint on the van, which any color of paint or primer will work as a story coat. And I'm going to show you what happens when you use a sanding stick that's this big to go across that surface and it will show you where all the low spots are. In this real world example I used my secret weapon sanding stick for a grand total of about 30 seconds and you can see smooth, high spot, low spot, high spot, low spot, smooth. Now the person that did the body work on this if they did it my foolproof way with the stick they would have been able to use a story coat or a different color of uh, hardener and identify that this is a low spot, fill it. Low spot, fill it before painting obviously and sand these down. The problem with this body job is the sanding block was way too small and that's not the guy's fault you know uh, this happens to pretty much everybody who's trying to learn bodywork. It happened to me for years and finally I made my own method that is foolproof without spending thousands of dollars on expensive fancy tools because I'm not a body man. I'm a fabricator more than anything I do mechanics and I do bodywork, but you know when it comes to buying expensive tools, uh, I would rather not. You know I do it the redneck way, the unorthodox way, pretty much every time I can to save money. And this here proves to you that that way works. I just hit her with the 100 grit sandpaper, knocked her down good. She's almost perfect. You can see right here what I'm talking about. Why I switch colors of hardener uh, because I sanded through the blue into the red and I knew to stop because that was already smoothed out. 
any further down and I would be creating a valley again. Now, it's not perfect, I know that. You probably know that too. You can see right here, there's no sanding lines in that dark spot, which means that didn't get touched by the sandpaper. The reason that didn't get touched is because it's not high enough. The same thing down here, needs a tiny bit more uh, body filler. And then, she's close to perfect, but I will show you how to get it absolutely bang on, smack dab where you need it. I've now put my final skim coat of filler into the last of the little valleys that I had. Uh, yeah, basically if you don't have two different colors of Bondo hardener, you can add more hardener and you can create different shades of the same color of Bondo, right? And that's, that's going to help you too. Looks pretty good, right? Feels pretty good. She feels smooth. She looks smooth. This is where most people quit. Uh, it may be good enough, but it's not good enough for me. It needs to be perfect. Unfortunately, I'm out of primer, at least spray primer, and it's late in the day, so I'm not mixing any. But you would use high build primer. When you're doing body work, high build primer is essential. Anyhow, I don't have any right now, but I do have high build fleet paint. It's black. It doesn't really matter. You don't need primer. It's much better to use primer at this step. But it's not absolutely necessary because basically all we're doing is we're going to mist on a story coat. Alright, so I now have a thin layer of spray put on there. It should be primer. It doesn't really matter right now. This is just a piece of junk demonstration anyway. But you can see we've added a story coat of color on top of our red and our blue. We now have one color. And the reason that we're using a light mist of paint or primer at this point, not another skim coat of body filler, is because this mist will sand off way easier than a skim coat of body filler and it's still going to show you where your lows are. So right now I'm going to sand it and then I'm going to show you what it exposes. Alright, so unfortunately I sanded her down, took all the black mist from the story coat off and she doesn't have much to expose. Except for right there, you can see a very, very minor low where the sandpaper did not take off the mist. You may think this is nothing, but when this vehicle is painted and it's shining, you absolutely would see that. So normally uh, if I was going to do, you know, a perfect job on this and it was actually something worth keeping, I would show you one more time how to bring that up and sand it down. But I've already showed you that like five times in this video, so you're just going to have to pretend that I did that one. And, uh, you know, basically I don't have any primer, uh, so I'm going to take the high build paint that I have, I'm going to clean this up, I'm going to sand and feather the edges with some 200 grit, and then I'm going to paint it and show you what it looks like after having an axe put to it. Here's what my piece of junk tailgate looks like standing up. Now, unfortunately, I'm out of sandpaper and primer. I've been doing a lot of body work lately and I refuse to sand with dull sandpaper. Anyhow, you get the concept here. You know, I'm not building a Swiss watch. I'm not even building a tailgate that I want to use. This is for demonstration only. Now, places like this, if I had sandpaper, I would sand it. I would blend it down until you couldn't hook a nail and feather the edges and I would also sand all the paint and clear coat from the entire tailgate right down to primer and then I would take some high build primer and I would reprime the whole thing including over the bodywork. I would smooth that out and then I would paint it. Right now though we're just kind of doing a demonstration so I'm going to get my pretend primer, aka my high build black fleet paint and I'm going to paint half and then I'm going to take it out and put dents in that side so we can have a before and after shot for the thumbnail. And there you have it, this demonstration was never about a perfect paint job that will come in another video. This was just to give you some tips to build confidence in bodywork without proper tools. So as you can see, it is totally possible to take an axe to your tailgate 
and fix a massive dent that was right there, no problem. No fancy tools, no expensive equipment, no costly supplies, just tips, tricks, and elbow grease. Anyhow, I get it, the paint's orange peel. It is impossible to do a good paint job without good primer, and I do not have primer. And I don't care about this tailgate. I'm going to take the axe to it again right now. So obviously, yeah, you can see where I didn't feather the edges and, you know, stuff like that. And you can also see that there's dust from Bondo flying around in here and wrecking the paint. But like I said, it was about the dent that used to be right there. Had absolutely nothing to do with the paint job. That's just so it looks a little bit better on video. Ooh, she's got curves. I like curves, shiny curves. I'm absolutely filthy. It's my day off and look at me. You might as well just call me Dusty. Anyhow, it's time for a shower and time for a drink. This video is done. So comment, rate, subscribe, share the damn video, don't do anything I wouldn't do, and stay tuned to the next one. Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil! <laughs>